Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Color of Science Digital Edition. Um, I got to tell you, we've had some amazing shows this digital series brought to you all kinds of celebrities, famous people, national, international figures. Um, we've had none other than world record holder, astronaut Kathy Sullivan, the first US female to walk in space and the person to actually be the only person to go up in space and to the deepest depths of the ocean. We've also had Caleb Anderson, an incredible 12 year old African-American kid who was accepted into none other than Georgia Tech to study aerospace engineering. Yes, at 12 years old, and that's one of the best aerospace engineering um, schools in the nation. So we've really been incredible at bringing to you phenomenal individuals. Today is officially our mic drop moment. I mean, what we have in store for you today is really just knocking it out the park, no pun intended. So but before I get to that, I do wanna share my screen because this is actually a real special week for COSI. So let me just share my screen. As mentioned, this is the Color Science Program brought to you by COSI Connects Live, which is our digital portal to a universe of science, technology, engineering, and math, wonderful, free, accessible information. Um, but today, there's really a special shout out before I get to our distinguished guest. And this shout out is happy birthday. Happy birthday to whom you're asking? Happy birthday to COSI. On Monday, this past Monday, COSI celebrated its 57th birthday, and we could not do that without all of your support, appreciating the great institution right here in Central Ohio, bringing you science, making it come alive, making it engaging. So thank you all for that support. And one of the neat things that's actually happening this week that coincidentally is, is aligning with our birthday is we have a very special opportunity here where COSI has been nominated of one of 30 institutions in the nation. And when I say 30 institutions, I'm talking about 35,000 museums and 9,000 libraries. That's a total of 45,000 institutions. COSI is one of 30 to possibly receive this national medal. This is the highest award in the nation. Definitely check out today because today is a special day where they are actually, when I say they, the Institutes of Museum and Library Services that gives this award from the White House. It's always given by the First Lady um, uh, of our nation. Here you see Laura Bush giving it a few years back. Here you see um, First Lady uh, Michelle Obama giving it out. So this is really a prestigious honor. We haven't won yet. We're one of 30. We'll know in May if we actually win. But even being one of 30 is an incredible honor and such a great way to celebrate our birthday. And today, IMLS is doing their 100% COSI all-in social media day. So again, look at these three different modalities, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Definitely send out what you love about COSI, how we've impacted your lives. Just really push it out so COSI has a great chance at winning. Now with that, the only other way to have a special birthday is to bring you our signature digital diversity and equity program called the Color of Science. Before I get to our guests, I got to thank our sponsors. We have our presenting sponsors, of course, Patel L Brands, the lead funder, the Curtis T. Beverly um, Cheeks Jewel Family Fund. Thank them so much. Additional support provided by CAS, Honda, and of course, as always, brought to you by the Garvey Institute where this program, the Color of Science, was founded. So with that, it's now my pleasure to let you know, with no further ado, today we are interviewing Camille Schreier. Who's Camille Schreier, you're asking? Well, even if you don't recognize the name, you'll recognize her title. This is Miss America 2020. And you might be asking, why are we interviewing a pageant winner at COSI? Well, not only is Miss America the Miss America of 2020, Camille is a biochemist. In fact, she has two science degrees. You're going to hear about that in a minute. And she's actually studying for her PhD in pharmacology. So we thought, what a special way to celebrate the diversity and equity, the fact that anybody of the 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet, if you're interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, you can accomplish that too. No better way than having Miss America. And so with that, I want to call her up, have her share her screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020. Hi there, Dr. Bertley. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. I am so excited to be here. I am going to put my screen on now so that everyone watching is able to see what I have going on. Let me see. Oh, 
Yep, you guys, can, you're just looking at my real screen right now. So give me just a second. There you go. Um, so I'm Camille. I have had the wonderful opportunity to talk about science for the last year and a half as uh, initially Miss Virginia and then Miss America. But this was something for me that was not just, just something to do to win Miss Virginia or Miss America because I was the little girl who loved science more than anything. And this is a photo of me when I was in elementary school. And people often ask me when I started to love STEM, and I don't really have a good answer for that because I was always a little girl that loved anything science related. So I was drawn to bugs and fish and being outside. I literally used to collect toads around my yard and keep them in a fish tank and force my parents to buy me crickets to keep them alive. That was what I was interested in as a little girl. I wasn't really into the whole princess thing. And it's it's really funny because at this age, my mom asked me if I ever wanted to do a pageant and I happily said, absolutely not. Um, but things had changed. And honestly, for me, I was so focused on academics throughout my entire process of going through middle school and high school and then into college. But there are so many different STEM careers that I could have taken and it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. And as a little girl, like that slide that you saw before, I said I wanted to be a naturologist because I wanted to express that I loved nature and I wanted to study that. And then I maybe wanted to be a food scientist or a meteorologist or an engineer, but eventually I decided to study biochemistry and systems biology, which is a brand new program. And it's more like computational biology. So like math meets biology. And so I studied biochemistry, which is like chemistry and biology together. So I love the blended sciences, but everything for me comes back to biology, which is what nature is. And I think that that's what I figured out. Now, what I really realized that I loved was how medicines, mostly chemicals, can affect the body and make us feel differently. And so I interned with a pharmaceutical company and I ended up wanting to go to pharmacy school. So I am now getting a doctor of pharmacy degree where I will finally get my degree eventually and go out into the workforce and talk about why science is so important to medicine um, and potentially maybe work in one of those companies and help them run their business. So that's just a little bit about me and why I love science, but the interesting America, thing- America, I gotta jump in here. Yes. That is a fantastic opening. I just wanna let you know that we can still see both your screen and your second screen in your shot. So if you wanna try to flip it one more time, so we just seen your slides, but otherwise- Interesting, I'm so sorry that that's happening. Um, no problem at all. I don't know how to do, oh. Is that better? Can there you see you both? Go. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thank um, you. See perfect. what happens when folks, when you study science, you can think on your feet and figure these things out. You know what? I've always joked that I love STEM, but the T has never been my strength. Um, <laughs> and the thing for me is you don't always have to be so great at S, T, E, and M. You got to figure out where you fall. Absolutely. So thank you for letting me know that. So I talked about the fact that I said I never wanted to do a pageant, um, but that wasn't actually true in my history. So I started competing in high school and I learned a lot. I learned how to speak in front of a group. I learned how to interview. I learned confidence in presenting myself, which is so important no matter if you're a young woman or a young man. It was just a way that I was allowed to kind of foster those skills in a way that I hadn't before. So I did that in high school, was kind of over it, didn't ever think I would do it again. But you know, this little picture on the bottom left of the screen came up on my Facebook when I was in pharmacy school. It said, join us for the 2019 sweeps pageant. Um, and it was the last competition leading up to Miss Virginia in 2019. And for me, it was kind of a bucket list item. I said, you know what, maybe I could do this. What do I have to lose? I just have this one problem, which is I can't be Miss America. And that was because there was this talent portion of the competition and I don't sing, I don't dance, I don't play an instrument. I cannot twirl batons and I, I cannot do ventriloquism, which are some of the most common talents that we see at Miss America. And so this is kind of what Miss America and talent has always looked like. And the women who do these talents are amazingly talented. They're beautiful. I wish I could do these things, but the reality is that I can't. And so what do scientists do when they have problems? I learned in school as a science student how to innovate, how to solve problems and not just solve them, but solve them in a specific way. And we always talk about the scientific method in, in school, 
but it's something that we can really apply to a lot of our life. So I observed, I said, okay, we don't see a lot of other talents at Miss America, but asking myself a question, am I allowed to do something different? I absolutely am, as long as it doesn't involve fire or live animals. Research, what can I do that would be true to who I am, but could also show my talents and passions? I said, maybe I can do a science demonstration. I tried it out. I tried to see how it would work, and you probably know where this goes from here. So I brought a science demonstration to that first competition that I saw on Facebook, and I always joke that I came with actual solutions to my problem, and it did solve my problem. I did win that local competition. I got to go to Miss Virginia, and as I started to go through this process, I kept improving what I was doing because you might solve a problem, but it's always important to think critically and figure out ways that you could potentially improve that. And so you see the difference in the size of this demonstration. It got a, a whole lot bigger, um, but I kept refining even the way that I was demonstrating and, and teaching because the talent in what I was able to do was not only the actual science that was happening in my flasks, it was the communication, it was the education, and it was the entertainment and passion for STEM that I think is something that's really inherent to this entire process and has made me really successful through this. So I kept improving and then this is what I did at Miss America. This was probably one of my favorite demonstrations in terms of the way that I presented it. Um, and the interesting thing about this entire process, independent of me getting a crown on my head at the end of the day, was that I won the talent award every single time that I did this demonstration. And sometimes in our lives, we have perceived barriers that we say, we can't do X because of Y and Z. And it's funny because sometimes we are the ones that put those barriers there for ourselves. And I did something that was 100% out of the box, but very part of my character and who I was. And I'm glad that I did that and took that risk because it paid off. Because not only did I win Miss Virginia, but I won Miss America in December of 2019. And I got to spend 2020 not always traveling the country as I had assumed I might be, but advocating for STEM education, talking about drug safety and abuse prevention through my social impact initiative called Mind Your Meds. And the interesting thing is a lot of people meet me and they expect Miss America to be a beauty queen. They expect me to come and maybe wave at them, take photos with them. But the job of Miss America in 2020 really supplemented my STEM career goals. It gave me the opportunity to talk about STEM at a, on a larger scale. I got to create my own science TV show. I got to talk about issues that were pertinent to my career in pharmacy and be an advocate for people in STEM, underrepresented groups in STEM and underserved communities that needed help with substance use disorders. I got to do all of those things. But most importantly, and my favorite, I got to become the science princess that I always wanted to be. And I never had a really great female role model in STEM when I was growing up. And so becoming the science princess for little girls was probably my favorite part of what I got to do. And so now I hope when you think of Miss America, maybe you have a little bit of a different perception of what Miss America might be. And for young women thinking about scholarship and getting higher education, Miss America gave me almost $80,000 to further my higher education. And that's the beauty of this. And so it's become a huge journey, a huge part of my life that I never expected. But a few key takeaways are that you really need to be creative and flexible in everything that you do and, and seize opportunities that are presented to you, even if it seems like you have to take a huge risk to do them, because you never really know how they might pay off in your life. And also just don't do things because everyone else is doing them. That's never a good reason to do something. You have to figure out who you are and then quite literally do that on purpose. And that is what will help you lead to the most successful career and future in so many ways. So that's just a little bit about me. Thank you, Dr. Bertley for having me on. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Absolutely, that was a fantastic introduction to your whole pathway. So. Look, I've had the pleasure of interviewing many people. Um, there are 7.7 .7 billion people on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Just a handful of you all get to say you're Miss America Year X. 
So absolutely, we, the COSI community, Central Ohio, the world is thrilled to have you Thank as you. our latest STEM advocate. But I've got to break it down and I got to ask you the question that you've been asked a million yeah. times, just right out the box. What's it like being Miss America? It's crazy and it's it's hard to describe, especially because my year as Miss America was so different than previous years with COVID. Mm -hmm. I served as a full-time traveling Miss America for about three months before COVID happened. I was I won in December of 2019 mm -hmm. and I had it until March 13th, 2020, that I was able to really fully be the Miss America that we all think of. Mm -hmm. But being Miss America to me is almost more being like a politician or a public figure representative where you are a role model for people across the country um, and really especially for women across the country that I get to to kind of represent which is it can be a little bit stressful can have a lot of pressure but it's definitely a unique opportunity and really there's only 93 women in the history of our country that have ever been Miss America so I get to say I'm one of them Unbelievable. So folks, listen, 93 women out of 335 million in this country. And by the way, there may be 93 women, but you're the only one I guarantee who both is Miss America, getting a PhD in science as a scientist, and you're also going to be the only one who's done it during a pandemic. So no matter how many ones come after you, you will always have that unique experience, which is just amazing. That'll follow you wherever you go. So that's great. We do have some Miss Americas that have pursued such higher education. Um, we have MDs, we have lawyers, we have vets that have been Miss America, okay. um, but not a lot of women have used that as their performing talent. I think that that's what makes my job unique. And of course the pandemic, definitely no one has gone through that before. <laughs> Good, well, I, I appreciate the courage and bravery to, to, to take that step. So um, you talked a little bit about your youth. I love that picture. I mean, with Me the hair up the thick glasses, you know, I thought you might've Photoshopped that. That's just such no. a cool photo. <laughs> But um, just just again, there are a lot of kids, uh, boys, and especially girls watching this right now. Yeah. Just say again the importance of it's okay to be a nerd or be geeky or like that stuff. Just talk a little bit more about that. Please. Oh my gosh, I'm a huge nerd. And I, I proudly say that I am a nerd um, <laughs> because I'm always interested in kind of those fun facts, learning more about something. I'm very curious. Um, and I started to realize when I was that young, as you saw that photo, that I was really never like everyone else around me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I felt a little bit isolated from my friends because I had different interests. I just kind of, I wanted to do different things. But the, the thing that I started to learn was that that was completely okay. Mm -hmm. And it's totally okay if you're the nerdy kid, you're different. It doesn't mean that you also can't be Miss America one day. So those sure. things are not, they're not the same. So it's, it's really interesting to be able to proudly talk about myself as a nerd um it's okay to to love that kind of stuff i like it too <laughs> terrific terrific all right so you're a scientist i'm a scientist i work at cosi the center of science and industry we love science we deal with data correct fair yes okay so can i just have a clarifying data point here and sure. that's um for the record is it accurate to say you went to cosi as a kid sure did i came to cosi uh in 1998 <laughs> so right. i was a very little girl, um, but the funny story is I held a cockroach when I was there and I also held a tarantula. Okay. And I think that that really freaked my mom out, but I was all for it. And that was pretty representative of the kind of three-year-old that I was. <laughs> Look, so that's terrific. So I just needed that data point, thank you. So Absolutely. you folks out there, hashtag come to COSI because if you go to COSI, you too can be Miss America. You never know. It's science. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So fast forward, you're loving your nerdiness. You're a kid. You're really into science. You talked about collecting bugs, being out of nature, et cetera. You go, you're whizzing through science um, courses in your high school and, and you get to college and you're studying science, you know, again, a bachelor of science, biochemistry, one of the toughest, you know, cool, hardcore science subjects. Talk to us again one more time about how you decide, wait a minute. Okay. I'm doing this. Let me jump into this pageant space. Yeah. I never thought that I would do it when I was an undergrad and it was quite literally a spur of the moment decision. I saw that advertisement on Facebook and it was two weeks away. So it was a very spontaneous decision and I am not a spontaneous person. So it was kind of out of character, but I'm glad that I did that because I felt like there was some reason why the universe was pushing me toward that particular opportunity at that time. And I would have to say that the universe was probably right depending like when you look at how it all panned out in the end. Um,
but I also didn't fully recognize at that time how much it would help my career and furthering my really professional goals at that point. And I'm glad that I allowed myself to be spontaneous because it really strengthened my professional skills through the process. Sure. So, so, okay. We talked about this in another conversation we had um, previously, and you talked about how to prepare and do the competition. I mean, yeah. you, you showed some beautiful images earlier, amazing contestants doing unbelievable talents, you yeah. know, um, singing, dancing, twirling, etc. cetera. Um, now you chose to do a science experiment. Mm -hmm. That's a little different because there are things that you can't control, like the yeah. temperature, that is the reaction to work. So talk about the, your courage that you must have had to still pursue that kind of um, um, activity or event. Well, I had to first figure out all of the materials I needed from glassware to chemicals to safety equipment and have everything prepared and quite literally knew I probably wouldn't even have time to wash my glassware in between demonstrations. And I probably had to do it three times when I was there or hopefully had to do it three times uh, and then brought a fourth set of chemicals and glassware in case something broke mm -hmm. as a backup, as we would all do. Mm -hmm. um, but I tested the reaction multiple times um, outside of my house in my driveway, trying to estimate the volumes of what I needed to do, making sure that I had a good process of how to develop my catalyst. I actually created that catalyst um, in my kitchen. It's not something you can buy commercially. So I had to make my own super saturated potassium iodide solution, had to make sure that I was effective in making that so that it would work when I needed it to and that all of them were the same. And then also when I got to Miss America, I did my rehearsal and I did the demonstration and it, I had estimated before it would go about 17 feet in the air, 15 mm. to 17 feet, it went about four. And I was like, well, dang, that is not as exciting as I expected it to be. What happened? Mm -hmm. Well, my glassware was brand new and I hadn't rinsed it properly. And I think uh. that my reagents were breaking down and they were not as effective. And so I kind of went into panic mode of, oh my gosh, how am I gonna solve this problem? I did eventually solve the problem kind of by compensating and using more chemicals than I had intended to. Mm -hmm. But the logistics and, and really understanding, if you don't understand the science of what you're doing, you, th this demonstration isn't effective. Mm -hmm. Because if I wasn't able to think through, why did this change? Or how can I change the outcome of this if this is happening in this particular situation? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to get it to be quite as exciting as it was. And so there's so many pieces that go into it. And sometimes I'm a little bit jealous when a woman can go up with her tap shoes or her dance shoes and do her performance and then just go off and not, there's no cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just not true to who I am. And I, I love the women that can do that, but that's never gonna be me. <laughs> well, and, and, and I do wanna say something, you know, I've heard this story from you many times now, but hearing it again and again, sharing it for our audience, you were scientific about yeah. the process of actually doing your talent. <laughs> And yeah. it's fair to say that because you were scientific, you had to iterate, you had to change, it didn't work, you wanted to go four feet, you wanted to go higher, and yeah. you actually problem solved is how you won Miss America. I mean, how yeah. cool is that? Is it fair to say you won Miss America, not just because you did a science experiment, but because you had a scientific way of thinking and approaching it? I think that people with scientific mindsets are often really successful in non-scientific environments because understanding how to think critically and in a process type way is really, really valuable in so many different pieces of life that, yes, I do think that that is what helped me to be successful in focusing my process and seeing this as, you know, a problem that I was hoping to solve. And I was able to use that type of thinking to help me get there. That That is such a fantastic story. And, and um, by the way, Folks, we're listening to the Color of Science program, digital edition, brought to you by COSI Connects. Go to COSI.org, check out all our programs. We are with Ms. Camille Schreier, none other than Miss America 2020. Um, one last thing before I start going to the questions, we have submitted yes. questions early that I want to get through from kiddos, and then awesome. some that are streaming, a whole bunch of streaming here on our chat. But one last question from me, and that's um, one of the things that I really loved when I started to, to meet you and hear your story was this idea of being your authentic self. Talk to us about your Miss America, but you you stayed true to who yeah. you were as a little kid, an adolescent, a young adult, and of course now the professional that you are. Yeah. 
sometimes we feel in life often that we have to emulate someone to get to a certain place. So if I said, I want to be Miss America, that I look at all of the former Miss Americas and I say, how can I be like them? And I don't always think that that is the most effective way to reach success. And it's okay to have role models and it's okay to have mentors, but it's never okay to emulate someone to get to a certain means to an end mm -hmm. because then you're not yourself. It's okay to take pieces of those things that you think are strengths and adapt them and see where they've learned or, or learned from them. But when I started the process of going to Miss Virginia and then Miss America, I said that I never wanted to change who I was because at the end of the day, if I came in last place, that I knew that I had showed exactly who I was. I never changed myself and I would never question, well, maybe if I had just been who I was, would I have won? And I think that that's part of the way that I do go through life now. And I will say at 18 years old, going to college for the first time, I wasn't that person. I was trying to be like everybody else because I thought that if I just figured out the right way, how did they do it? Because I just do that, then I'm gonna be successful. And that's so not true. And it took me a long time to figure out who I was and then be able to apply that in these situations. So I think it's more than ever important to explore different things in the world, interests, topics, figure out what your opinions are on certain things because that's what's going to allow you to be really authentic because then you know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, then you don't know how to represent yourself in a way that's authentic to you. Um, and so that comes with time and that comes with growth. And I'm grateful that I was able to do that. And now after a year as Miss America, I feel like I know exactly who I am. That is such a profound message. And it really takes me back to something I used to hear as a kiddo listening to a rap show from New York City called <laughs> Kiss FM. And they used to say, always be, always be yourself, um, be true to yourself. Because if not, you might find yourself by yourself. This idea of your 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 true authentic you. And so my very last question before I go to, to, yep. to these, all these questions is, you know, you're young, you celebrated a birthday, I believe you're 25 right now, unbelievably young, but so accomplished. Thank you. What do you want your legacy to be? Ah, uh, I think that if I could choose one thing, it would be that I'm not afraid to be different. And if that's how people remember me in my lifetime, then I've done my job. Wow, that's... That is short, but definitely on point. So, all right, um, let's get to some questions. These are questions that were submitted previously. Awesome. Um, so the first one is, um, we all wanna be Miss America in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And this is by the way, from Jeffrey C. So we all wanna be Miss America in our hearts, but how can we make being a scientist just as desirable of a goal? Wow, I think that what defines Miss America is having this opportunity to impact so many people across the country. I get to go around, I get to meet people, I get to share my opinions, I get to tell them about who I am. But if we look at science and research and the things that we get to do as scientists as a way to impact everyone around the country, isn't that kind of in the similar realm? You get to impact people, you get to make a difference, you get to change people's lives. So I think if we think of science in that way, then science and Miss America are kind of the same, right? I love that. So, so related to that is Sophia F. asked, um, how can Miss America organization foster more STEM, that science, technology, engineering, and math platforms at the local and state level? Mm -hmm. I think that it's dependent on the girl. Every girl gets an opportunity to share what her passions are and what she's excited about. And I often tell students when I go into their schools, I don't want you to pursue a STEM career because I told you to pursue a STEM career. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want the organization to force STEM on whatever girl was competing if it wasn't who she was. Mm -hmm. If that girl is a talented musician and an artist and that is exactly who she is and that's what she wants to do, I would want her to do that. So I think it's important to give girls the knowledge that STEM is important to encourage girls to talk about STEM if that's part of who they are but I would never want them to, to feel like they had to do that because I, I wouldn't know if I wasn't in the realm of STEM, I'd be really overwhelmed with how I would be able to advocate for it. Just as maybe if I were put in a situation to advocate for the arts, they wouldn't really be able to speak to that because they don't have the experience. So um, I think that it's important that we all focus on who we are. And that's the cool thing is that every girl gets to advocate for their own cause. That, that's terrific. And so, so well, so uh, uh, Arundhati wants to know, um, they definitely want to become a biochemist. So they actually want to know awesome. how do you become a biochemist? 
Um, well, first of all, you have to go through a lot of really hard classes um, and don't let that scare you away. I didn't actually start college majoring in biochemistry. I started as a chemical engineer and then I changed my path about a year and a half into my college education to systems biology and then realized that I was like, you know what, I really like this biochemistry thing. And I'm, I have this opportunity to get this second degree because I have some extra time here. And I added that on and started taking the classes and just fell in love with it. So I learned a lot about the body. I learned more about chemistry than I could have ever imagined. I learned biology. I learned genetics. I learned laboratory techniques that are so cool that I was just blown away by them. Um, but I then used those skills to go into my pharmacy program. So um, I am not working as a biochemist, but I definitely have a background in it. And so go to college, get some experience, work in a research lab if you can. Those are wonderful things to be able to really allow yourself to be immersed in biochemistry. Okay, terrific. And, and you talked about kind of some of your grad work. And so Jill A wants to know, do you have examples of how prescription drugs can save a life yet also destroy one if the doses aren't correct. Oh, wow. Um, absolutely. I mean, if you even think of something like, I'm gonna think of something like benign, like insulin, right? If you're having a diabetic emergency and your blood sugar is way too high, you're gonna have to take insulin to bring it down to a normal level. But also if you have too little blood sugar, it's also a dangerous situation. So if you take too much, then you could end up in hypoglycemia, and then you end up in a dangerous low blood sugar situation. And there's many medications across the board where, you know, we think of this idea called titration of finding a dose that is right to treat whatever cause that is. That's so incredibly important. And part of why I'm really passionate about talking about medication safety and really respecting substances altogether, whether or not we're thinking of something really dangerous, like a street drug, something like heroin that can be really addictive and dangerous. I wouldn't want you to think that you could not have an adverse problem with a prescribed drug or something over the counter. If you don't respect the power of that substance, you can get yourself into a dangerous situation. So medications are wonderful and they can help us so much. And that's why I love pharmacy, but also they can be detrimental if we don't use them properly or don't take time to really understand what we're supposed to do with them. Well, that's a fantastic public service announcement brought to you by the Color of Science from none other than Miss America 2020. Listen to people like Miss America, other pharmacologists and, and medical doctors and nurses when you're getting prescribed drugs, follow what they tell you, take the doses and the Read the directions. <laughs> Read the directions, absolutely. Don't skip the directions. You can skip the directions when you're putting together your Ikea cabinet. But don't skip the directions when you're taking the medicine. Please don't. Fair <laughs> Another good PSA. All right. <laughs> Tabitha L says, um, my daughter is six and wants to be an astronaut. She Love wants that. to know if you wanted to be in STEM at her age. So at six years old, you talked about your childhood. Go way back at six. Did you know you wanted to be a STEM career professional? Oh, for sure. I think that the picture that I showed in the very beginning, I was probably around five. Okay. And I'd have to get my parents to corroborate this, but I am pretty sure that by six, because I was probably in kindergarten at that point, mm -hmm. it, everything that I wanted to do was STEM related. So I absolutely wanted to have some kind of STEM career. I don't think I knew how to express that. Mm -hmm. And I definitely have changed what STEM career I want to do from, the, from that point in my life, mm -hmm. but I still definitely had the interest there. And it doesn't shock anyone in my family that this is what I ended up doing. <laughs> Perfect. So, so Miss Tabitha L, make sure you let your your six year old daughter know that if she wants to be an astronaut today, she can be an astronaut. Start astronaut working astronaut. toward it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Here's a fun question about kind of the different experiments you did in your pageantry experience. Yeah. So, so Ashley W wants to know what other experiments did you think about doing before deciding on the elephant toothpaste that wowed the nation and got you that beautiful tiara as Miss America 2020. I didn't have a lot of other ones that I considered other than one called Genie in a Bottle, okay. which is also the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, but it's it shows in a very different way because you use a different catalyst. Okay. And it creates this smoke that comes out of the flasks, which is really, really cool. It looks like a genie coming out of a bottle. Okay. But the problem was when I was thinking about disposing of this, right? How would I clean it up? 
I would need to actually put those materials in a hazardous material disposal bin to have them, you know, discarded properly. I couldn't throw them in the regular trash. Well, that was a logistical problem going to Miss America because I probably wouldn't have access to something like that. Sure. And the cool thing about elephant's toothpaste in the way that I do it, you can just wash it right down the drain and it's safe for the environment. Um, and one of the key reasons why I chose elephant's toothpaste, and as you saw the progression of those photos, mm -hmm. was it was relatively easy, but I could make it really large. I didn't know how to do that originally, so I was looking for alternatives. But once I figured out how to tailor it so it could be really large and colorful, mm -hmm. I didn't need to consider anything else at that point. I was like, this is my go to. And it's so fun. <laughs> this is fantastic. You, you, you provided so many teachable moments so far, um, but you're a chemist slash biochemist getting your doctorate in pharmacology. Um, you've used the term catalyst so many times. It clearly <laughs> is the key kind of secret sauce for these great experiments you're doing. It for is. the crowd, can you just explain what do you mean by a catalyst so they understand why that was so important in what you did? Absolutely. A catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. It doesn't actually involve itself in the reaction. It's just kind of like, I always joke that it's like if you were trying to ride your bike up a hill and you would struggle, right? You would still get up the, the hill eventually, but if you had a motor on your bike, you would get up that hill the same way, but much faster. And so that's kind of what a catalyst is. It just makes things a little bit easier, happens quicker. And so the reaction I did would be really slow if I didn't use a catalyst. So that catalyst is the one that starts it. So it's the secret sauce. It doesn't change your final recipe, the meal nope. that you're eating. It's just it cooks, it prepares it much faster. Sure does. Maybe like a convection oven or an Instapot. There you go. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. Um, so, so here's a question from Katie T. She wants to know, what was the biggest challenge or obstacle you faced as a woman in STEM? My answer to this is not very exciting, which is good because I haven't faced a lot of challenges as a woman in STEM yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting because when I do encounter people of a, a little bit of an older generation than I am who are women in STEM, I hear the stories of how they struggled in their programs because they were not treated equally. And I really had a great experience so far as a woman in STEM where I feel like I've been treated equally. Um, I've had a couple teachers that have made some rude comments at me, but other than that, I really haven't faced much adversity in that. And I think that that's a testament to how far we're coming as a society okay. in including women in STEM. Um, and so I get to continue that. And I also do think it's funny. The only thing is that I'm always expected to not be a very feminine woman in STEM. That's the only thing that I see as a, a change that we could continue to make yeah. is that you can be feminine, you can like makeup, you can wear heels and you can still be a scientist. Um, you can do all those things. God, that's fantastic. Um, and so related to that, um, Catherine, Catherine B. from Washington Rose Elementary School wants to know, what suggestions do you have on how to encourage um, minorities to get into STEM? So minorities and, and girls. So you you have a great experience. As you said, we've come a long way. We still have uh, ways to improve. But what um, recommendations would you have for, for minorities or women to get into STEM? I think representation is number one, one of the ways that we can really improve that. And so when I go into schools, especially um, where there's, you know, maybe in an underserved area, um, or maybe I'm with particularly young women, and it doesn't even really matter what group I'm in, but being able to not only inspire them about the, the science of what I'm doing, but show them an adult woman who is in a STEM career. And that's important for not only those young girls or minorities in in the room, but also for the boys, being able to see a woman successful in a STEM career and just normalizing that. So I think representation is so key. And then also having the access to resources is a problem that I continue to see. And COSI especially, we've talked about the ways that COSI is helping get those resources to communities that need them. And so that's something I think is incredibly important too. So all those things need to work together. And I think that we'll get to a place where um, we'll have a lot of equality in the STEM fields. I love it. And I got to say facts again, Miss America gave a shout out to COSI. So thank you for that, Camille. All right. Um, we're about to get to some of the questions that are through the cool. chat. But one last question here is um, we at COSI have a saying from womb to tomb. Now you touched, <laughs> this, you touched on this a little bit, um, but I want you to unpack a little more. Tell us about your pediatric to geriatric initiative surrounding yeah. drug safety and abuse prevention called Mind Your Meds. Yeah. Why is this important to you and what is that program? 
So about half of what I do as Miss America 2020 was science related and still about half of what I do. The other half is focused on my career passions as a future pharmacist. And so I focus on not only medication safety for parents and kids, and maybe if you're a caregiver of an older adult, but preventing substance use disorders, because we have an epidemic of substance use disorders and overdoses in this country that I think is relatively silent, which is really scary for me to look at when I look at the numbers. We think of COVID right now and how many people are losing their lives, but we lose almost 220 people every day just to an opioid overdose. It's exclusive of any other substances or drugs, and that's a lot of people. So preventing that from happening is the best way that we can solve that problem. But of course, there's so many people facing it or in recovery or active, um, and I get to be an advocate for them. So that's a much more serious side of what I do as well. Right. Um, and I enjoy that work because I feel like I can directly impact lives and really change people's lives for the better and give representation where there's so much stigma around that. It's interesting because we think of COVID, we hear of the deaths on the TV every single day of how many people have lost their lives, but we never hear about the people that have overdosed. Yeah. And I think it's because it's so stigmatized. It's seen as not quite as important for us to hear about. And it breaks my heart because those are lives too. So that's something that I do. Um, and both of these are things that I continue to do now as I continue on as Camille um, and head back to school. So we'll continue for many years to come. That's fantastic. And, and it's really, again, it's a really encouraging message, an encouraging message to everyone who's listening, regardless of their age, because, you know, here you are a pageant queen, here you are a scientist, but you're also thinking about kind of the human condition and doing your advocacy work for very important causes. And that's really a lovely sentiment that you can use your big brain to understand science, you know, your outgoing personality to, to be a pageant winner, but you're doing it all to move humanity forward in a positive way. And I just, I really appreciate that message um, from COSI to you. That, that is awesome. Um, all right. You're listening to the Color of Science program. We always bring distinguished guests today on our birthday week. COSI turned 57. We have none other than a COSI alum, Miss America 2020, Camille Schreier. So good to have you. I'm going to jump to the chat now because it's awesome. going on. Let me ask some questions here. So, um, da, 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 da. What was the craziest thing? And I don't have the name. Oh, actually, this is from Lisa. Lisa okay. F. S. wants to know, what was the craziest thing you did to win? Um, and what was that science project? So we know about the, the elephant toothpaste, but was there something also that was really crazy that you did to win? Oh did my you gosh. Break some heels of your competitors? No, oh my gosh, I would never do that. Um, I, I, I think that the craziest thing I did to win was quite literally doing the demonstration, but more than anything, I mean, I fell down a flight of stairs before I won, if that counts. <laughs> hey, if the president um, of the United States can fall up going up, you can fall going down. We're good. So um, nothing too crazy. Um, really came in with a, with a plan of how I was going to execute that, mm -hmm. but definitely knew I was taking a risk with the talent. And so I'm going to have to say the talent takes the cake. Okay, th that's terrific. Um, Patricia V wants to know, um, were they hard parts about being a biochemist? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Academically, it being becoming, you know, any kind of STEM career, and it's not just biochemistry, any STEM degree that you get, they're hard degrees. <laughs> they are hard. <laughs> and I had to even repeat some classes when I was in college. And I think that that's something that people don't talk about because it's like, oh, I'm finally done. And I don't like publicly talk about my GPA, but I had classes that I really struggled in. And that's okay because I still graduated, I still got into graduate school. And the classes I still learned from, but I never, I, I didn't always get an A in every single one of them. Um, and so you had to, I had to learn how to be okay with that because I, all of us are kind of focused on success and how things look on paper. And so was I, and I still kind of am, but it's important for us to recognize that that's not everything. So yes, becoming someone with a biochemistry degree is incredibly hard. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it or that you should let a few bad classes or bad tests keep you from finishing. I got to tell you, this whole talk, this whole interview so far has been a, a, a true inspiration. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from Miss America, who's also about to get her doctorate. And she says, it's OK to struggle a little bit in courses. You know, don't think that you have to have a straight A GPA. 
it's okay. I, I just love the fact that you say that with Thank pride. That, that's so fantastic. I'm not telling um, you to get an F, but I'm telling yeah. you, you, you don't always have to get an A. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's okay if something's hard, right? Yeah, for Not sure. everything in life should be easy. <laughs> exactly. Okay, great. All right, so we have Logan. Um, oh, <laughs> Logan's putting you on the spot here. Logan wants to know, is that the real Miss American crown behind you? Yeah, it is. I put oh, well, it in actually Thank you not for only that question. Walk us through this. Well, not only is this the actual crown, but this is one of the flasks that I used at Miss America, and now it's a decoration in my home. Ooh, um, look at that. And I like to have that behind me as a testament to what I've done. But this is, yes, the crown that I won. Okay. Um, and in typical fashion, I often would get asked, is it real? And mm -hmm. my follow-up question was always, well, what's your definition of real? Mm -hmm. So I contacted the manufacturer and I got the specifications of this. And so it has a bronze interior. Mm -hmm. It is soldered together with a tin alloy metal and it's silver plated mm -hmm. and it has 792 Swarovski crystals in it. Oh, go. wow. Swarovski crystals. Wow. So that so is it's not diamond. And what I've also realized, if there's any uh, kiddos watching, oftentimes the young ones want to know if it's plastic or metal. Mm -hmm. Metal means it's real to them. But adults are curious if it's diamonds. And um, if this was diamonds, I would need a bodyguard with me. <laughs> Got it. So, well, let me ask you a question, though. Do you get to keep that or do sure you do. transfer that to the next winner? I sure get to keep it. Everyone gets their own to keep for their lifetime. Um, and the design has stayed about the same since 1955. So um, many manufacturers. But when you look back in the pictures of Miss America's for the last 65 years, mm -hmm. um, we all have the same crown, which is so cool. That is fantastic. You are definitely part of a great tradition. That's awesome. All right. Patricia wants to know, were you nervous when you did the science experiment in Miss America for the first time? I don't think I was because I had practiced it so much. I, I'm one of the people that thinks of, you know, don't practice until it's perfect. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Um, and I did that so many times. And so I knew that I could execute it well. I was a little curious the re how the reaction, not the actual chemical reaction, but how the reaction of the audience would be. But I, at some point, didn't really care because I knew that it was true to who I was. And so even if no one liked it, I was happy with the fact that I even got to do it sure. and that I had made it that far. Sure. Um, so that's kind of the attitude I adopted. And people did like it. So it was cool. <laughs> the, the world loved it, to be fair. And here you are, the winner. So. Um, Caroline wants to know, related question, when creating, doing an experiment, how much trial and error would you say it takes um, before you, you see success? It totally depends. In a laboratory environment, in science, it can take years to figure out a solution to the problem that you have. Um, when we think of something like the COVID vaccine, it's very rare that we had a vaccine within a year of a virus coming into our country that's abnormal to have something happen that quickly. Now, when I'm designing a demonstration for the stage, I didn't create elephant's toothpaste. Someone else did, and I adapted it for what I needed on stage. So it's unrealistic to think that you'd be able to solve a problem in a few weeks in science. Um, but typically it takes very, very long. And researchers have a patience that I admire to be able to continue to persevere and solve problems that we need to have solved in our in our world and in our communities. Um, so science is a slow process, but it's a needed one. Terrific. Um, Sudesh wants to know, I'm very interested in a STEM career, but I don't know which field to focus on. Yeah. How could I choose which field to focus on? I go back to exploration. So finding people that potentially have jobs or uh, specialties that you're interested in and then talking to them or watching what they do mm -hmm. is a great way for you to figure out if maybe that particular field is right for you mm -hmm. or maybe if you walk in there and you say you know what I thought this would be cool but I could never do this job that's just as important to figure out mm -hmm. because there are so many STEM careers so get an idea of maybe what you do like so far um, in a general topic figure out some cool jobs that maybe you could do and then find some people that do them that was something that helped me um, and then also take, just taking a risk in school, taking a class maybe that was different, looking up a new degree program, finding out about it, talking to people, definitely just need to try. Got it, great, great. All right, here's a kind of biography question for you. Tammy W wants to know, were you ever a Girl Scout? <laughs> I was a Girl Scout. 
Um, I was a Girl Scout from daisies to juniors. Um, and my favorite thing was to sell the Girl Scout cookies during that season. I think I sold the most in my troop. I just have to take credit for that. You know, it was probably 15 years ago, um, but I was a Girl Scout and they do an awesome job in promoting girls in STEM as well. Got it. Well, I'm sure you're going to get a call from Tammy W. Because um, I know she's a Girl Scout enthusiast. She might follow you. Love that. that. All right. You got it. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, there was a really good question. Ah, another kind of future question for you. Um, Jennifer A. wants to know, what's next after you graduate with your PhD? Oh, well, I guess the first thing is I have to go back to school. Um, mm -hmm. I will graduate with my doctor of pharmacy in 2024. Mm -hmm. So I'll be a farm D I'll pass my licensing exam, hopefully. Um, and then I'd like to work in a pharmaceutical company. And that was what made me interested in becoming a pharmacist to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to go back into one of those companies and work kind of in business development and combine the science of what I know with business because science and business actually go hand in hand in so many ways mm -hmm. um, because you can create all this awesome science stuff, but you have to know how to, to market it and sell it and bring it to people. Mm -hmm. so that's been something I've been really interested in. And so I'd like to pursue my career there, but I'm also open to opportunities that present themselves, mm -hmm. which is kind of my whole message in a lot of this as well. <laughs> well, and there's no doubt as both a PhD scientist and Miss America 2020, you have an infinite number of opportunities. So, so, and well-earned. Thank you. Well <laughs> um, here's a comment that I want to read to you. And by the way, we have some amazing comments. We always save the chat. We'll get the chat. To Thank you. you. Keep that Good. <laughs> but I want to read this one out loud. Lourdes Love once says at East Coast USA pageant, I think she's at or was at an East Coast USA okay. pageant. And I want to be a scientist when I get older. I am eight years old. Oh Some words God. of advice to, to, to Lourdes, if you will. I, I love that you love science too. Um, and use all of the skills that you gain through your stage competitions to help you become a really confident woman in STEM. Because one of the things that I've realized is that being able to communicate effectively which is what I learned from my onstage experiences, mm -hmm. but that has made me even more of a successful woman in STEM. So you're right on the right path. All right, terrific. And kind of related, Henley B wants to know, what advice do you have for other contestants who might have non-traditional talents? Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you have there? Quite literally, just go for it. Um, check to make sure that you are within the guidelines and that you have, you are, fulfilling the rules um and that you aren't breaking them so don't i'm not telling you to break the rules but do something different and sell that as something that is entertaining but also valuable one of the biggest things i realized that even though you know my talent seems to be non-traditional it still has to be entertaining for the audience that's kind of what the whole talent competition is part of and you have 90 seconds to keep someone's attention and so if whatever your skill is can do that or that you can find a way to adapt your skill or talent to do that then go for it i mean i encourage you to try to do something different uh i i kind of hope that i broke the mold in that and that people will be more encouraged to do something different you got it and we're going to come back to that entertainment piece later when we talk about our prize giveaway um awesome. So one more question from the chat, then I have two more concluding questions, and then we got to get to our, our, our giveaway piece. Mm -hmm. um, here's just a basic question. Um, and where is it? Cynthia. Cynthia wants to know, what do biochemists do? Oh, they do a variety of things. Um, if you have a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and you maybe are, you could take a job in a lot of different biotech industries. Maybe you would want to go and pursue medicine or pharmacy. You can use that as a way to really lead yourself into those careers. But if you want to get a PhD in biochemistry and you want to study that all day long, every day, you might be working in a pharmaceutical company, helping to design new medications. You might be researching just basic science and understanding more about how the body works or how certain pathways in the body works. You're going to be learning a lot and studying a lot about how chemistry affects biological organisms. That's kind of the way that I think of biochemistry in a greater sense. Um, there's so many broad opportunities and, and that kind of brings me to my next point, which is you might choose something that seems very specific in STEM, like biochemistry, 
you can do a world of different things with something like that. Same with chemistry or physics or anything in these careers. There's so many different options. And that's the really cool thing about just getting a science undergrad degree alone opens up opportunities. That's a really great message. So even if you're unsure what you're going to do when you're 30, 40, 50, 80, getting some type of education in STEM would Good be base. a tool for your future. That's fantastic. So look, I mean, you're a complete inspiration for all the things we talked about, you know, crushing it in the pageant space, crushing it in the academic space, being grounded, being a down to earth person who really cares about humanity, which is why you have these mission based causes. Um, Talk, uh, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, you kind of went into like makeup and glamour, but I yeah. want you to just really hit that a little harder yeah. about this idea that it's okay to be into this kind of stuff, glitz and glamour, as well as rocket science or biochemistry. Yeah, I think that one of the interesting things is that people were expecting that I was breaking stereotypes in the Miss America world by being a very forwardly woman in science, mm -hmm. talking about science as my my thing, which I'm not the first woman in STEM to ever compete for Miss America or even win Miss America. I just made it such a part of who I was going into the competition. And mm -hmm. ironically enough, I think it was almost a double stereotype breaking because you think of maybe a woman in STEM and you don't think of a girl with a crown on and high heels and maybe I love pink and doing all these like very girly things. And I've spoken to a lot of women in high level STEM careers, whether or not they're researchers or executives. And sometimes they feel like they cannot always express their feminine side in fear of maybe not being taken seriously in the same way, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because we've made a lot of progress in accepting women in STEM careers. But the fact that they might not be inherently feminine women is still a place that we can definitely improve on. And so, when I go around, I, I oftentimes wear sparkly goggles that are pink. I wear pink, I wear blingy lab coats and all that kind of stuff because I really try to make the point for maybe a young girl in the room who can't see herself. Maybe she loves princesses and she loves makeup and she loves hair. Mm -hmm. Well, you can go be, be a cosmetic scientist for a makeup company eventually. Mm -hmm. And chemistry is gonna wanna, what's going to help you get there. Yeah. So to allow her to see herself in that type of a career and same with the boys in the room, being able to see that there's no reason you have to pick. And we hear that a lot that you don't have to choose, do both. Mm -hmm. But really, once you see that, it starts to make more sense. So I love that. And I'm glad you talked about wearing some bling on your lab coat and, you know, working in a cosmetic company, makeup and beauty products. And with that, I absolutely want to give a plug for a brand new cool compound coming out called awesome. Mayfield Glow. Miss USA, Miss America, sorry, 2020, you will actually get a first edition oh, cool. from Frederick Burley to you. I'll tell you more details about it later, but it's called Mate Flow, and it really brings out the beauty in all people. It's for men and women, um, but especially, you know, Miss USA Love that. It, it's part of that design. Um, so I want you to hold on because I want to close out the program. Please stay with us. Perfect. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so here we go. You're listening to Miss America. 2020 on the color of science. Ms. Camille Schreier, it is so great to have you here. Such an honor to, to have this incredible conversation. As I mentioned, you're an inspiration, you're a role model, you're crushing it on all these distinct fields, putting it all together, helping to make us see humanity in, in a better light. And so with that, I wanna talk about the competition that's gonna be inspired by you. Um, but before I do that, I wanna share your website Folks, if you want to follow up with Miss America, learn all about the cool things she's doing, follow her. Go to www.camilleschreier, which is her name, .com, and follow her. Um, she loves um, you. She loves folks reaching out, so she'll definitely get back to you. So with that, I want to talk about our STEAM challenge. As you know, every month we do this, this the Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math Challenge. This April theme STEAM challenge is the Science Entertainer. So we want you to draw a picture, um, take a photo of any drawing, painting, any type of representation you do um, for what a science princess could look like, what a science athlete could look like, what a science actor or actress could look like. Again, another plug for science princess, a science musician or a science dancer. So any field that you think is entertainment, starting with a princess, what now after hearing Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020, after hearing a great presentation, what to you does a science princess look like? Send that drawing. Here's how you send it in to Vanessa Bowers at cosi.org. Again, that's V 
Bowers at COSI.org. The deadline is May 1st, and we will be, during our science festival, May 5th through May 8th, we will be drawing all the different contestants from the past six months of doing this. Third place gets a COSI Connects kit. Second place gets this really cool high-tech hologram machine. And first place gets an iPad mini. All you got to do is submit a photograph of your art project um, to vbowers at COSI.org. Miss Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020. I don't think I can have a next guest for May. I think I have to shut down this program because you just took it to a whole other level. Thank you for spending an hour with us, Columbus, the, the state of Ohio, and the world. I'm sharing your story. The last words are yours. Oh my gosh, you are too kind. Thank you for allowing me to share my story um, with not only the COSI community, but everyone else watching. Uh, thank you for listening. And I hope that I've inspired you or maybe changed your perception uh, of Miss America in 2020, because it's so much more than just being a beauty queen. You got it. And I'll just say, we've said this before in previous conversations, not only your inspiration for all, your legacy is etched in, in the hallowed halls of inspirational people. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.